Good morning, folks. It begins again. The incoming sunspot group began firing solar flares once more as it turns into face Earth. Two M flares thus far, and unlike its last pass on the Earth-facing disk, the CMEs are starting as well. May be difficult to see in just Soho, Lasco, but perhaps a bit easier when using cactus here. The active region maintains delta-class magnetics as bipolar umbras interact and develop in multiple places, including the trailing core of the region. More activity is expected as Saturn readies to conjoin the Sun in just two days on November 18th. Meanwhile, the 18th will also see Mercury heliocentrically oppose Uranus. This should ramp solar activity while the Saturn conjunction is active in earthquakes as well, especially combined with the Earth-facing coronal holes here. The first opening had intense power when the 7 magnitude earthquake from yesterday's news occurred, and the trailing opening retained strong force as well. Even more fun abounds as the coronal hole stream from that departing north has reached Earth, really showing that force as speed ramps quickly and geomagnetic instability returns. We'll keep watch. Cosmic ray charts from Bartol are still frustrating as neutrons are updated, but we've still got nothing since the 13th on the muons. Anyone else tired of missing data? Oh well. We've got to also eye the plasma filaments on the disk, including a massive rope with solar tornadoes turning in now. A quick reminder to website members, the special October update that can be found at the top of the evening news page showed, among other things, some notes from my meeting with Kong Pop where we discussed why planets form where they do. He came on fly on the wall yesterday and blew our freaking minds as we noted an exact replica in space published just six days after the October update. And we also discussed how energy changes in space can trigger the changes we're seeing in the system along with some that could be much, much more disruptive. Let's note potential cyclone development in the Indian Ocean here. Two major flood threats where convergences draw back towards the coastlines of South America and Africa, respectively there. The Hudson Low still yanks Arctic air southward, but a secondary low in the south-central U.S. is keeping it to its north and west while drawing up from warmer weather on its eastern edge. Channel veterans will recognize the patterned wind drive and the brief break the southeast will get from these terribly cold conditions. Of course, that heat injection means severe thunderstorm possibilities. The major snowstorm lingers right behind, ready to smash more records wherever it goes. Europe has a wicked collision of multiple air masses from three different directions. They descend on Europe, and tonight's watch zones for the area are widespread at the rendezvous and the convergence is drawing away from it. Down under with the precipitable water overlay, we see heavy potential in the northwest, and even though the southeast convergence doesn't have as much now, it will develop in a big way over the next few hours. Eyes open in Melbourne. We got current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.